Today is July 3rd, 2013. You're watching Speed Run. Current Windows head Julie Larson Green is poised to be the next boss of Microsoft's hardware division, following the departure of Don Matrick. Larson Green would head the charge for the Xbox 360, Xbox One, and Surface tablets. Some sources say former Skype president Tony Bates may also be taking charge of acquisitions and relationships with Microsoft software developers. And just in case you were wondering exactly what was up, we've laid out the stakes involved with Matrix's move to mobile and social developer Zynga. Companies affected by Don's jump include his former employer, Electronic Arts, along with Microsoft and Zynga. The Xbox One will support scanning of QR codes. This will allow users to easily redeem lengthy codes and confirm digital game downloads. Earlier this week, Microsoft's Mark Witten confirmed the feature via a tweet in response to a cheeky Reddit post of the One in its new Kinect, with the words, If you're going to require this thing, then at least give us the option to enter our 15 codes that come with new games. Finally. Double Fine Productions will launch the first half of its Kickstarter-backed point-and-click adventure Broken Age in January 2014. Because the game has grown, Double Fine plans to launch Part 1 via Steam Early Access. Studio boss Tim Schafer said in a letter to Kickstarter backers that this will help improve the game's efficiency without reducing its scope. Otherwise, the team would have to cut 75% of the game's content. The second part of the game is expected by April or May. By launching the first half of the game early, Schaefer and company say they will not require additional backer funding, and players will get the full version of Broken Age into their hands sooner. Our new feature explores the growth of the video game industry in Kenya. Six years ago, the industry didn't exist, but with support from the government and private investors, the East African nation is quickly becoming a game development hotspot. Game makers from the region share their stories of getting to that sweet spot in Kenya's gaming climate. We took a look at Cellador Games' Rogue Legacy, and it's actually a pretty neat RPG. Players control an entire bloodline of heroes as they battle their way through a strange, shape-shifting castle. Rogue Legacy bridges the gap between the games that I played in my childhood and the games that I'm most interested in playing now. It's openly inspired by games like Castlevania, but it's also much more than just a nostalgic retread. It also forces you to spend all of your money before you enter the castle again, and likely die again. Can't take it with you. We'll be taking a break for the long holiday weekend. Happy 4th, Polynauts.